TD Bank has been in the news recently and investors, well, let me tell you, they're not happy about what this big six Canadian bank has been up to. Fasten your seatbelts, folks. This is going to be a good one. TD Bank has been looking to really make a name for themselves on the international stage. And, well, they have succeeded, though perhaps not in the way they had hoped. In fact, they are in the middle of a money laundering scandal for failing to report suspicious activities. As a result, they have already been fined $9.2 million in Canada by FinTrack for five violations of the Proceeds of Crime and Terrorist Financing Act. The violations include the bank's failure to submit suspicious transaction reports, lack of required information from politically exposed individuals, and inadequate monitoring and record keeping of business relationships. It does not end there. TD is also looking at investigations and potential fines south of the border. The U.S. Department of Justice is probing the bank's anti-money laundering compliance, and analysts have estimated that TD could be exposed to fines in the range of, well, $500 million to $1 billion, and that's in USD. In addition to that, they had a $13.4 billion acquisition bid in to acquire First Horizon Corporation in uh, Tennessee. That has now collapsed, and I mean very fast. It is easy to see that TD's U.S. expansion plans have been hurt big time by this scandal. Join today's conversation. Let me know in the comments if you are holding TD. Thank you for your participation. If you love this sort of content, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more and another huge thank you for that click. Now that we've looked at the news surrounding the current TD scandal, we do have to still look at TD as a whole and see if they are a good investment. That is, if the scandal hasn't scared off your investing dollars. I will point out that the data for this deep dive is from their January earnings call. We do have another earnings call coming on May 23rd. I will, of course, do a review of the Big Six after earnings week, so stay tuned for that. Okay, it is time to get into some numbers, and to do that, we need to call on the guy who lives on both the X and Y axis at the same time, the one and only Mr. Math. As usual, we will begin with a little surface data. They have a current value at the time of recording of $76.21. This is down quite a bit, as they were sitting close to $82 just at the end of April. Hmm, what could have happened? Uh, scandal? Their market cap comes in at $135.31 billion, and their beta comes in at 0 0.83, so they are a little bit less volatile than the market average. When it comes to their earnings per share, that comes in at 6.33, and they've got a price-to-earnings ratio of 12.09. The average amongst the big six is 12.90. A few of those peers, well, we got a couple here. CIBC has 10.3, uh, Scotiabank's coming in at 10.60, and Bank of Montreal 17.80 at the top end of that spectrum. Their price to book ratio, that comes in at 1.20, the average amongst those same pairs 1.30. Their return on equity, that comes in at 10.72%, and their return on assets, that comes in at 0.63%. This value does seem low, but it's actually not bad for a bank. I would love to see the ROA a little higher, but like I said, it's not that bad. And overall, most of the surface data is fine, though that price drop is always concerning. Okay, let's peel back another layer and take a look at that cash situation. Their revenue comes in at $50.40 billion. They have earnings of $11.47 billion. Now, those earnings are projected to grow by 6.83% per year. They have a good-looking profit margin of 22.8%. Free cash flow, it is in the negative, negative 57.87 billion. And their operating cash flow is also in the negative at negative 55.96 billion. These negative cash flows are not unexpected as they are moving more and more money into cash loss provisioning to get ready for, well, that mess of mortgage renewals that are on the horizon. And of course, maybe a wee bit of their cash went in to pay that FinTrack fine as well. Let's look at their fair value. So their current value, once again, $76.21. And using a discounted cash flow model, we do get a fair value of 137.53. That pegs them as being undervalued by 44.8%. I have a feeling that their fair value may take a hit before the money laundering scandal is, uh, well, in the rear view mirror. Their one-year projection comes in at $87.97. So they are expected to go up by 15.8%. Once again, 
and though take this projection with a grain of salt as well, right now I cannot see them hitting that goal and I expect to see it modified downwards in the near future. The cash situation was not unexpected as this is currently how most of the banks are looking as they prepare for what is coming with, uh, with those mortgages. Once rate cuts begin, that will help, but for some customers, they will be too little too late. Okay, let's take a look at their return data, and I have a feeling we will feel the effects of the scandal here more than anywhere else in this data today. Let's start with their dividend. They have a yield of 5.371%. It is a quarterly dividend, paid out in the amount of $1.02 per share. The payout ratio on that comes in at 61.61%, so it is pretty sustainable. Over their last five years, the average dividend increase, that comes in at 7.57%. Let's switch to that return on investment. So over their three year, their price fell from $88.80 down to $76.21. This is a return on investment of negative 14.18%. Factor in the dividends, they almost save them, bringing them up to a total return of negative 1.77%. On the one year, they fell from $82.36 to $76.21. That is a return of investment of negative 7.47%. Factoring in their dividends, we get a total return of negative 2.66%. On the year to date, that return on investment, holy banana bread, negative 10.66%. Total return after we add in the dividends of negative 8.26%. The year to date is showing the unhappiness of investors with the money laundering scandal. This is pretty bad. Now a few of you might be saying, well, most of the banks are struggling. Let's take a look. If you look at Scotiabank, for example, their year to date total return is in the positive to the tune of 6.39%. CIBC is at 7.04%. National Bank, National Bank is at a huge 15.95%. Royal Bank is at 5.82%. And well, yes, we do have one other one in the negative and that's a BMO, but they're they're at negative 0.34%, which is still heads and tails above where TD is. Okay, let's dive deeper and jump into that debt data. They have a total debt of 430.96 billion. Yep, that is a lot of debt, but higher debt, once again, is perfectly normal for the banking business model. Their total equity comes in at 112.44 billion, so that gives us a debt to equity ratio of 383.3%. That is high, and I will tell you, this ratio has been increasing over the past five years, as it was only 259.1% back in 2019. They are moving in the wrong direction, but considering the economic climate of the pandemic and beyond, this rise is, well, it is actually understandable. Now, this is nice. Their cash and cash equivalents comes in at 500.43 billion. That is a nice a chunk of change, and it does make that big debt look a lot less, well, big. Let's take a look at the short term. They have short term assets of 576.72 billion and liabilities of 1.57 trillion. You gotta love seeing the T in there every so often. Most of these liabilities, and we're talking about 68% of them, are from low risk funding sources. And that, that is really good. On the long term, they have assets of 1.33 trillion and those liabilities look a lot better, 231.45 billion. Looking overall at their debt situation, it's not that bad. And it is kind of in line with what I would expect for a bank in these current economic conditions. I do keep in mind that this data, of course, is from before the scandal. So we will have to look at the next few earnings to see if it if it does impact their debt situation in any way. When we look at their loan loss provisioning, they do have a lot of money set aside for that, which is good. They are prepared to weather the mortgage renewal storm that is brewing in the very near future. In fact, the outer bands should already be hitting. Okay, I think I have enough data to answer that one big question. What is my final verdict? I don't think the question should be if this is a good long-term investment, as, well, it is. Scandals pass and stock prices will eventually recover. However, the more prudent question may be, has the drop finished? Is there more pain to come? This is a really good question, and any amount of answer is always going to be speculation on some level, at, well, at the very least. I do think there is more room to fall in this scandal, as I expect once we have the U.S. fines drops, well, so other stock. 
how low could it go? Who knows? Though if I had a best guess, I would not be shocked to see it down as low as well. Maybe $70 or maybe even just a little bit lower. Keep in mind, I could be 100% wrong and we could already be at the bottom if the worst case fines of the scandal have already been priced in. I, I do suspect that they have not. If you want to ride this stock back up, I would actually think a dollar cost averaging approach would be the best way to go. Overall, this is still a blue chip company and they will recover. Not a company for the short to midterm investor as you will not really see your returns in the near future. For the passive income investor, there are banks with higher yields. But if they do drop more, this yield may begin to look a little more attractive. If you already hold this bank, I would more than likely not sell as it will recover with some patience. The one exception is if I wanted to do some tax loss harvesting, provided this was in a non-registered account, of course. Of course, if I did not want to get rid of my TD stocks, I might think about adding a little bit more in a DCA strategy just to average that average cost base down a wee bit. If you do not own this bank and want to get in, then I would approach it with a dollar cost averaging flair. I would also be prepared for that possible drop to come so I don't catch a serious case of FUD when it happens. If you are interested in TD Bank, don't forget to put in a whole heaping helping of due diligence before you place any of your hard-earned money on the table. Let's continue that learning journey by checking out this video on CIBC. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.